Hey YouTube, welcome to TCT and the Crazy Troll Nation of YouTube, the crazy because I just am sometimes. And other times I'm fairly normal, like now, because I'm going through something, so I'm just kind of like not really in an excitable or happy frame of mind. The troll, because I consider myself a troll when I put on face paint. A cute troll, but a troll nonetheless, and as you can see, I don't have more face paint today. I just got up, I think it's almost 3 o'clock. I did just brush my teeth and wash my face. I have not put on chapstick. I have not put on any moisturizers or serums or anything. And the motivating factor to get up now is because I need to drop off two packages at the post office. I already packaged them and um, printed out the labels. But this is the situation. And this is going to be a friendship relationship type video. Um, I got a phone call from the nursing home actually just yesterday. Today is... May 6th. I received a phone call on May 5th that my mom was running a low-grade fever and so they tested her and she tested positive for COVID and I immediately became emotional. Tried not to cry. It didn't work because I was trying to think of what information I wanted to know and the only thing I managed to ask her was, okay, so what goes on from here? Um, and they are going to screen her. They're going to check her um, temperature and her oxygen levels twice per shift and I asked what her temperature was and it was she said last last they checked it it was 97.4 so it is really low grade and I know for the hospitals they want you to have at least a 104 temperature to even consider it a fever so it is really low grade and I was really emotional I couldn't think of what else to say and so I thanked her for calling um, I contacted two of my aunts who were nurses and told them um, cause we, we keep in touch about, you know, my mom and also my grandmother who, one of my aunts, well actually both of them take care of, um, so it was really emotional. So my, my emotions ranged from sad, depression, crying, and anger. <laughs> and, um, today, I, you know, I kept waking up. I did sleep a little longer than usual, but then when I would wake up, I just had like no motivation and... And then I ended up with a migraine, and then I had an ocular migraine, and I just kept going back to sleep. And finally, I'm like, I need to get out of bed. Even if I just migrate to the sofa, <laughs> at least I'm out of the bed and have on clothes. This is the shirt that I sleep in, so I haven't even, like, changed my clothes yet. Um, so I, I wanted to do this video because I wanted to share this, and I wanted to ask you guys, how are you coping with your emotions and your feelings? And still being motivated to do day-to-day -day things with a loved one who has tested positive for COVID. I will say I am encouraged a little bit um, because a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, she's had three family members who had COVID, one who was 64 years old, and they've all recovered. They all had a fever um, three or four weeks and some respiratory issues, and then they recovered. So that was really encouraging. Um, but for my mom... Yeah, this shirt is real comfortable. It has a hole in it. Um, I know. My, my mind is just all over the place. Um, so I was encouraged about that. But for my mom, because she is in the nursing home, they closed it down to visitors in the middle of March. She has dementia. She's not able to communicate. She's not able to articulate words. Um, so it's hard to even, when we do video chats, to talk with her and be like, hey, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? And it just makes it even more sad for me um, to not be able to communicate with her or for her to be able to communicate with me. Well, it's a two-way street thing. So my question is, you know, how are you coping with knowing um, a loved one or even a close friend, which is a loved one, has COVID? And I was thinking about this video and what else I wanted to say and um, the friendship aspect came up for me. I know a lot of people post a lot of really personal things on Facebook and on Twitter and on whatever other social media outlets that they use. And for me, because I prefer quality over quantity, I don't post really personal information on Facebook. If we are like diehard friends, I will call you and talk to you or text you and talk to you. And it goes both ways. There are you know, a handful of people who I am really close with that, you know, we talk about the good things, we talk about the bad things, and it is a personal conversation, which to me, when something is just put out for the masses on social media, usually I don't even comment on it because I feel like that's not 
a message they want me to have. That's just a message or something they want everyone to have. And then they're inundated with a bunch of messages and, you know, emojis and consolations. And, and I'm just like, but are they there when there's not this thing going on that you posted about? And I feel like for me, that would be just overwhelming to have hundreds of people <laughs> sending me these messages or writing these comments when they don't even, or we don't talk on a regular basis. And so for me, it, it loses some of the, I don't want to say authenticity because if you put something sad out there, happy, and I'm like, oh, I'm really happy for you or something like this. And they're like, oh my gosh, my condolences. I do believe it's genuine. It just makes me feel like, well, where are you when there's just really nothing going on in life? You know, like the friends that I have, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's indifferent, we're still in touch. And so just to be in touch when something huge happens, it, it just seems like it would be overwhelming to me and it would make me question, um, I don't want to say the friendship, because if it was a friendship, it would be a back and forth regardless of what's going on. Um, so I guess I'll say just being cordial with people or being friendly with people. I'm not sure. And I don't even know if I'm going to post this because as I'm speaking, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm not really making sense. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on, you know, posting information on social media? You know, does it bother you? Does it not bother you? If it is someone you know, do you comment on it? Do you just leave it alone and wait for a call? Um, do you text that person and say, hey, I saw you posted this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I don't even do that. If I see something on social media, I don't even text the person and be like, hey, because I don't feel like it's for me. I feel like it's just for everybody. And is that me wanting to feel special? Like, what do you guys think? Like, I don't know. I just feel like if you're really close with someone I'm trying to hide my... <laughs> I just feel like if you're really close with someone, they would already know that without needing social media for that. However, I do know that it is easier for people who do have a large quantity of friends. It is easier just to post it and just not have to text or call individual people. So what are your thoughts on that? Friendships and social media. Um, and personal information being posted. What do you guys feel about that? So that's the second question. The first question is how are you coping with um, your own emotions from a loved one having tested positive for COVID? So thank you for watching. Bye.